Okay, if everybody settled in, I think we're ready to begin. We do have some more <coughs> copies of documents we'll be passing out uh, during the press conference. Next slide, Mark. Well, thank you, Browning, very much, and thank you all for being here. Um, on November 3rd, I received uh, the most devastating news uh, a university president can get. Uh, one of our students died after attending an off-campus fraternity party. Losing a member of uh, the Florida State University family is always hard, but to see a young person's life cut short senselessly, senselessly is especially heartbreaking. I never want uh, to see another family have to suffer the kind of tragedy that Andrew Coffey's loved ones have experienced. The safety and well-being of our students will always be my number one priority, and that's why I called for an immediate interim suspension of all Greek life activities. I believe the suspension was needed to give the campus community a time to reflect on Andrew's death and to begin to chart a safer, healthier path forward. Over the past three months, uh, Vice President for Student Affairs, Dr. Amy Heck, and her team have been working diligently and I'd say tirelessly uh, with our fraternities and sororities and other stakeholders to develop policies and procedures that will support a more constructive environment surrounding our Greek life community. I want to praise the students. I really do want to praise the students who have worked with us in this process. Several of them are here and you'll meet them. It wasn't easy, but their participation helped develop a plan that we hope will begin to shift the campus culture in a positive direction. Our plan involves increased oversight of our fraternities and sororities, more clearly articulated expectations of our students, and more efforts aimed at reducing the risks of the members of our community. I've said all along that in order for there to be real change, students must be a part of the solution. I think they are now beginning to fully understand the serious obligation they have to behave responsibly. Fraternity and sorority leaders have agreed to accept a number of substantial reform, reforms outlined in our plan. That's why today I am lifting portions of the interim suspension as we begin to implement these policy changes. We will now allow Greek organizations to resume recruitment and philanthropic activities. If they, re if they prove to be responsible in implementing these activities, we will allow the fraternities and sororities to hold social events later in the semester. For now, the alcohol ban will remain in effect for Greek organizations, as well as 700 or so recognized student organizations. We will also revisit this later in the semester. Our new plan, and I want to emphasize this, is just the beginning of what we hope will be real change in the campus culture, not the end. I'd like to thank again Vice President Amy Hecht for her tireless work and above all her sincere dedication to the safety and well-being of every single one of our students. I'd also like to thank uh, all the administrators, and we've had all of our administrators involved in these issues who've worked on this plan, as well as the fraternity and sorority advisors nationally as well as locally, and alumni, as well as their national associations and chapters for their valuable input. I want to also acknowledge the uh, guidance from our board of trustees, especially Chairman Ed Burr, throughout the process. And I'd personally like to thank the university presidents from around the country, and I've heard from many, who are looking to Florida State for this leadership as well as parents and alumni who have reached out to offer encouragement this past few months. We know that Florida State is not alone in its efforts to reform Greek life, and we appreciate their support. And finally, and still probably most importantly, I want to thank our students. Our students are the reason we are here. Our only goal is to see that you achieve your dreams and, and earn a college degree in a safe in a safe and supportive environment. We're optimistic that this new structure will do that. I'm counting, I'm counting on our Greek community and their leaders to make sure that they are the champions of this cultural change and to lead by example for the good of our Florida State University family. So now it's my, it's my pleasure to introduce Dr. Amy Heck, who will tell you more about the plan as we move forward. Amy?
Thank you, President Thrasher. The President and I are committed to fraternity and sorority life at campus. Not only are we both Florida State University alumni, but we are both members of Greek letter organizations. So we know firsthand the wonderful impact these organizations can have on individuals, our university, and our community. Over the past several months, I, along with my staff, have been meeting with students, advisors, alum, and national organization to discuss bold ideas that would help foster a more healthy fraternity and sorority life campus and overall campus community. With me today are council presidents, Jessica Barloga with Panhellenic, Cameron Canton with NPHC, who's on his way from class, Chris Panango with MGC, and Nick Wallerman with IFC. And I wanna publicly thank these student leaders who have worked with me hand in hand and have been instrumental in creating new ideas and gathering feedback from our over 7,000 students in fraternities and sororities. I'd like to thank our chapter presidents and advisors who have come to the table to proactively address the challenges in this community. The plan before you is unique in that it was built not only by Florida State University, but by our students, by our student leaders, alumni, and national organizations. And as we move forward, Florida State University is going to be even more clear about our expectations and values we're going to increase oversight, both by the university, by advisors, and by the national organizations. This has to be a partnership for it to work. And we're going to reduce risk. In the plan, you will also see that our councils are addressing their unique needs among their memberships. Of particular note are several instances that we will be highlighting. Under Oversight, we will be partnering more with national organizations to hold at least two two-day visits to our campus. We will be training advisors more thoroughly so that they can better support our students. And we will be expanding staff in the Office of Fraternity and Sorority Life. We will be creating new alcohol policies and accountability measures to ensure our students can safely operate, as well as limiting the pledge period for our IFC organizations by 25%. All of these measures are going to continue to be assessed and evaluated. I will be creating a Greek advisory council to help me assess and evaluate and make recommendations as we move forward. To realize our goal of a healthier campus, we must remain vigilant and continue these conversations that have been started. So as President Thrasher said, today is not the end, but the beginning of a healthier fraternity and sorority life at Florida State. Thank you. Yes. So we will continue to hold them accountable through our, our student code of conduct and give them due process, but we will be vigilant um, to make sure that our students are operating as safely as possible. Um, I am very confident that they will continue to uphold their end of the deal as we lift these portions of suspension. I, I mean, Lord, I'd, I'd remind you, you know, the state attorney mm -hmm. just uh, brought charges against nine young men. Um, and I think that's made a resounding difference in, in the perception of these types of activities among these young people. And I really believe that, as sad as that is, uh, we still had a death. Yeah. And I, I uh, regret that more than anything. But I, I will tell you, I think it's made a difference. Hazing and alcohol abuse in these contexts that, that created this particular incident has got to stop. And I think the young people realize that now. And that's why they're here. That's why they're supporting what Dr. Heck and others have been working on uh, in regard to this. They want to change the culture, I believe. And I think they've, they've, they've championed it. And I think they've bought into it. So I'm optimistic. I'm very optimistic that they are seeing the, uh, the results of what we've talked about and that the implementation of these programs will be a positive effect on, that, on, the, on the culture of our, of our Greek community, but also Florida State University.
We have looked, we've looked across the country at some best practices. Um, our plan was created for our unique needs and in our culture. So where we could inspire another campus, I think that's wonderful. But for us, this is what Florida State University needed at this time and what we created and what we have the buy-in from the students, national organizations, and alumni to accomplish. So I think that is going to be the difference for us in terms of our ability to make the change we need. Well, currently, um, we do ask that students participate um, in our student rights and responsibility process, meaning they must show. But of course, it's their constitutional right to not uh, communicate or um, give any verbal statements in our, in our due process. So in that way, we cannot force someone to give any information um, when we are investigating, but we do hope that our students will see how important it is to be safe, to hold each other accountable, and ensure that we're following these policies and procedures, which are not meant to take away the fun and the social aspect of fraternity and sorority life, but they're meant to ensure that our students can be successful, that they're graduating, that they're having these positive experiences through our Greek community. You look, yeah. you look at... Uh... Uh, State Attorney Campbell's uh, the report that came from the grand jury, and you look at the, the the changes we've made. Many of those follow the suggestions they've made, and to the extent that we could, legally and otherwise, we've tried to implement those. Because, in my opinion, the grand jury did an excellent job of reviewing this case and an excellent job of making recommendations to us that we could follow, or obviously, or not follow. But certainly, they were substantive recommendations that we've looked at very seriously, and I. I appreciate uh, Jack Campbell's work on this, as well as the, uh, both grand juries that he impaneled throughout this process. Yes, sir. Well, one of, the, one, of the, one of the things we're asking the fraternities and sororities to do themselves is monitor those kinds of things and to understand the ramifications. I can't, I can't send uh, Chief Perry's officers to every single potential outlet that might be off campus. There are thousands of those. So we can't, we can't necessarily control that. What we control, though, is the idea that this is a bad activity that resulted in a terrible, terrible uh, tragedy. And I hope that's what's getting through because the communication, the bully pulpit that we have to talk about that, the leaders of these uh, organizations that are here, I think they're the ones who are going to make that communication uh, firm and, and, and understandable that if that kind of activity goes on again, it's going to put, it's going to put Greek life in jeopardy. And that's, I don't want that. I, I'll say this. I don't want that. I, I was a Greek. Amy said she was a Greek a long time ago, albeit for me. But let me say this, some of the best leaders we have on campus come out of our Greek community. They really do. And we want them, we want them to, you know, preserve that. But on the other hand, they've got to buy in and understand that that kind of activity is putting fraternities and sororities around the country on the precipice of being extinguished. And that's, that's why I think this is the message that we're creating through this process is making a difference in getting through. Yes, sir. Well, we've talked to we've talked to national folks. We've talked to local folks. Uh, we've talked, you know, we've talked to our, one of our trustees, Mark Hillis, is here. He's a representative of one of the national fraternities, and uh, his input has been invaluable. Uh, some of them, uh, you know, gave us some advice, uh, a little more perhaps or less than we wanted, but. Uh, I think we've uh, responded in, a, in an appropriate way. I want the bottom line from nationals, I want their involvement. Uh, a lot of people say, oh, no, it's got to be all local, and we understand that. The nationals had better wake up. They better wake up, or they're going to lose the opportunity to have these chapters in some of these great universities like Florida State University. 
So I hope they're getting the message, and we're trying to work with them on a cooperative basis. And we're even, as Amy said, in part of her presentation, part of our outline, we're asking them to come to campus. I want them to come to campus so they can see these fraternities in action and sororities and give us any input they want, uh, they think that we need. But they've got to be involved, no question about it. I don't know that there will be, but I, I will say the difference now and the difference then is we had a tragic death, and I think that, that that group is no longer here, and I think others are beginning to realize that that kind of activity, that kind of hazing is not, is not going to work at Florida State University because we're not going to tolerate it, and I hope the national organizations aren't going to tolerate it. So that's one difference. The other is I think this, this program, this, this, these things that we are creating here, I think is making it will make a difference. I feel very optimistic in the fact that these student leaders have in, have engaged in this process and given us their input is an indication. I think the students have now begun to realize this is a culture that needs to change. Others. For me, there, there are two, two, hazing and alcohol. They mean to change. And I'm, uh, you know, that's why we've, we've, we've not actually lifted the ban on alcohol. I've, I've, by the way, I hope everybody understands, it. we've kept the ban on alcohol not only for our student organizations, but for our entire FSU community. Uh, of all the activities that we've had at Florida State University since this event occurred, we have not, at any of our recognized activities in the university, served alcohol. And frankly, I like that. <laughs> I think it's probably been a pretty good, a good thing. And I hope that the, 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 the point of getting that across is that, you know, alcohol and hazing and the length of time that some of these organizations have to initiate uh, uh, folks in their, in their groups, I think has been too long. And that's one of the reasons Amy has suggested strongly that we reduce that time in order to help prevent that kind of activity from occurring. Other questions? Thank you all very much. We appreciate it.